I'm Moby. Uh, about a month or so ago, I made a little video that was a making of my song, My Only Love, which was a cover of a Roxy Music song. And I enjoyed making it. And presumptuously, it seemed like people enjoyed watching it. So I thought I'd make another making of video. And this is for a song called Morningside that's also on my album, All Visible Objects. Now this song started a little bit odd or oddly in that it started with acoustic guitar. And when you hear the song, it's, you know, an electronic dance song and you don't hear any acoustic guitar. And there's a good reason why you don't hear acoustic guitar that I'll get into as my little making of progresses. But I had this original idea of writing a, a dance song, an electronic dance song based around acoustic guitar. So I recorded some very simple, almost like plaintive folk guitar to a click track. So after I recorded the acoustic guitar, I decided, not surprisingly, to add some drums because electronic dance music almost invariably involves drums. So I added some program drums and then did my usual thing of adding live drums as well. Uh, as I mentioned in the first making of video, live drums to me just give drum patterns a little sort of organic feel, energy. I would use the word vibe, but that makes me uncomfortable. I'm an uptight wasp from Connecticut, so saying that things have a vibe ugh, makes me nervous. So, but I add live drums to program drums. So then I have acoustic guitar and live and program drums. And obviously the song needed more. Um, so the next thing I wanted to add was a marimba part. And you might be wondering why in the world would you want to add a marimba part? Like who even knows about marimbas? Who thinks about Marimbas. Maybe Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman loves tuned percussion. So let's say in the spirit of Danny Elfman, I added a tuned percussion part, but because I don't have any marimbas here, I played uh, a marimba part on my keyboard along with the guitar part I'd recorded and the drums. So now I had marimba, acoustic guitar, and live drums, and I decided to add a bass part, a nice sort of anchoring synth bass part that I also played on my keyboard. So I had these four elements, well, five technically, the acoustic guitar, the marimba, the live drums and the program drums, and this bass part, that's five, correct? Yeah, five. And it wasn't feeling great to me. Like I, I knew that I liked, I especially liked the sort of weird atmospheric reverberated marimba part. And I added 
a sort of low drone bass part on an old analog, uh, like late 1960s organ that I have. So now I had all these parts. I have live drums, program drums, marimba, acoustic guitar, bass, and a second bass part. And I liked it, but I realized the acoustic guitar wasn't working. Part of it was the song had somehow shifted into being in a different key. Um, the acoustic guitar part I wrote was in was D minor, A minor, uh, G major, F major and the song itself had moved sort of into an A minor key signature. So there's some overlap, but I decided to remove the acoustic guitar, which I guess is a little odd seeing as the acoustic guitar is kind of what started the track. But then once I removed the acoustic guitar, I realized the song felt a lot better. So when I first started making electronic music, um, I wanted to include really emotional vocals in my tracks. This is going back to the late 80s. Um, so I always loved really emotional or atmospheric or interesting vocals. The problem was twofold back then. One, I didn't know how to record vocals. I know that seems odd, but no, I didn't, I didn't have a good preamp. I didn't have a good microphone. And so if I wanted to have vocals, I had to usually use sampled vocals. And it made me realize how much I actually like the feel of sampled vocals. So for this track, as it evolved, once I took out the acoustic guitar, I wanted to add vocals. So I went back to an older song I had done with my friend Apollo Jane, and I love her voice. I mean, if you're familiar with my work, we work, she and I work together a lot. Uh, so I took these samples, they were, you know, snippets from another song that we had done. And I sampled them, um, put them in a sampler, triggered them with the keyboard. And then, and they sounded, I thought they sounded good, but then I wanted to give them sort of, I don't know, like a different atmosphere. Um, so they weren't too clean. And one of my favorite instruments, even though it's technically an effect, I think of it as an instrument because it's so odd and melodic is my old Echoplex tape delay. So I broke out my Echoplex tape delay and ran Apollo Jane's vocals through the tape delay, um, re-recorded them back into Pro Tools and then lined them up so they fit with the track. Uh, so, but because I love this old Echoplex tape delay, let's take a look at, and also unfortunately Apollo Jane isn't here, so it would be great if she could come in and sing her parts for you right now. But um, I guess the Echoplex tape delay will have to do in lieu of that. So, a little bit of recap. Started with acoustic guitar, added drums, live drums, program drums, two bass parts, a marimba part, and then we took the poor little acoustic guitar part out behind the woodshed and maybe, maybe we bought it a bus ticket. That's a less violent image. Okay, so we bought the acoustic guitar a bus ticket, sent it on its way, maybe it moved to Austin open a Pilates studio. And so we have all these elements. And the most recent element we added was vocals going through the echoplex. Sorry to be pedantic, but I'm almost saying this to remind myself of what's in the track. And then I wanted to give it a sense of grandeur. So I added a fairly simple chord progression played with a very simple pad
And after doing that, after adding this simple pad, I really liked the way this track was coming together. But it didn't feel dark enough. It didn't feel grand enough. Like I wanted it to, to sort of feel a little bit, I don't know, like maybe I'm overstating it, it's hyperbole, but a little bit like the end of the world, like this dramatic moment. And so I wanted to give it more orchestral grandeur. So using the same MIDI track, I sent the same MIDI part to about four different string modules and synth modules to create this much bigger, grander, sort of more orchestral part. And of course, I then added some more little bits and pieces, but basically I got to that point where I thought, okay, the song is done. Like there's no recurring chorus. There's no distinct identifiable word-based vocal hook, but to me it just felt like a finished piece of music. And, and then I had to give it a title. And I ended up going with Morningside because uh, I was born in New York City, in Harlem, technically in Morningside. And so I spent the first couple years of my life you know, on the Upper West Side, in Morningside, in Harlem. And it reminded me of you know, my early days of going out to nightclubs in New York and you know, how, especially the West Side, like, I don't know, well, I guess I do know why it was because of, it's obscure, but the Cabaret Act that was passed after, I think it was called the Happy Land Disco Fire. There was basically legislation that was passed that pushed almost all of New York nightclubs to the West Side. And I would drive into the city and I would drive past the hospital in Harlem where I was born and I would drive past the neighborhood I had spent my first couple of years in to go to these nightclubs in the, you know, the late 80s. And th this was back when New York was very dangerous and apocalyptic. And this song kind of reminded me of that time, you know, of a New York, maybe we're going back to that now, post pandemic, I don't know, but like a New York that was scary, dangerous, but also this really remarkable fertile ground for creativity. I mean, you think of, you know, unfortunately, like the darker, more dirty, more dangerous a city is, the more likely it is to create great art. So maybe that's one positive thing that will come out of this pandemic is, you know, here's fingers crossed, hoping that people are able to create great art, music, literature, science theorems etc from this pandemic so that's how i know i went off on a tangent there but that's how i created the song morningside and also why it's called morningside i hope you enjoyed it and maybe sometime soon i'll make another one of these how-to tutorials okay thanks